and yeah, okay, it's it's counting down. We're live, so technically we're live, and but there's nobody listening at the moment. <laughs> it's just all around waiting, the anticipation. Right. This yes. is our pre. This is our pre-show that really only the um, only people who listen later <laughs> on the recorded part here, because if they're not watching us now, they're not hearing it. Exactly. <laughs> They're, they gotta they'll go hear this pre show. The show from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what all the really interesting and uh, conflicting, all the news. <laughs> the information. That's right. This, this, this is where all the personal information comes out. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, we got well, two people. Still... We got two people now. <laughs> oh, oof. well, they they're gonna have to rewind or what or get into our Patreon to hear yeah. about yeah. Max's uh, calendar. It's, it's, it's too calendar. late now. Yeah. <laughs> now now <laughs> still have to talk to the boring information. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we were, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, um, hmm. so what kind of, I mean, I mean, well, I, we'll get into this later. We also have an, we have a friend named Daniel. He does science shows as well. He's, uh -huh. he's pretty, he's pretty fun. We have, uh -huh. <laughs> he has like all kinds of electricity stuff going all over the place. And sure, yeah. he has a, he has a picture of himself with this jet of fire coming off his hand. <laughs> it's like, it's pretty... <laughs> the words are always like I could, I could find a candle. We could do that. Maybe. No, I put this <laughs> I've got pretty good insurance, but I'm not ready for that. So. Right. Well, Daniel has uh, probably killed himself a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. he's told a couple of stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, I, uh, I had gotten into the science thing. Well, so I trained as an entertainer in college. And I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you guys know what you call an entertainer? Uh, a full-time entertainer who lives in Wichita, Kansas. No, homeless. You call them homeless. So, <laughs> oh, that's what uh, that's what a that's what a drummer is in Austin. R I'm right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and so I became a social worker and uh, started working with the homeless population while I was a professional pirate on the side doing uh, the Renaissance circuit. Uh, then I uh, got really burnt out of uh, everything and i ran away to the woods in new hampshire one summer and realized i had a lot of fun uh doing small science classes uh talking about uh newton's law so on and so forth so i came back to to kansas after summer immediately just by some fates aligning got a job at the uh, children's science museum there in wichita and started doing science shows well, they introduced me to a man uh, a little over 10 years ago who would become my next father figure, mentor, uh, everything else. And when I was a kid, he was very busy uh, writing a show on Nickelodeon called Mr. Wizard's World. Oh. And, and so he, he worked with Don Herbert, Wizard 3, Mr. Wizard, for a, a great number of years. And he would travel from Wichita, Kansas out to Mr. Wizard's studio in LA, up to Canada at Nickelodeon where they filmed uh, in the same studio space where they did You Can't Do That in, on television. And okay. uh, he would travel that for you know the next 10 years. After, wow. that, after that gig, he became the chief scientist over at Discovery Channel. You know, you, you told so many people back then that you worked for Mr. Wizard, and they started trusting your uh, your acumen and giving you better titles and better pay. Nice. While, while he was at Discovery Channel, he started uh, writing a little television show that ran for about 15 years called Mythbusters. And I've heard of that. You know, the guy who yep. has trained me is the same guy who tra trained Adam and Jamie. Uh, and so that's, okay. that's kind of the, the school that I'm in. And uh, Jake is still now. I just had a two-hour conversation with him today. Uh, still, just one of the best people I know in my life. And so nice. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm kind okay. of that. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's put a pause on that. And I'm going to officially get started here. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, hello oh, once again. It. Yes, once again, you have found a Texas Team Punk connection. We are transmitting to you throughout our various airships and bunkers throughout the multiverse, and you steampunkers out there. Uh, once again, I have with me Jack from Seam Chest and Zach's the Gentleman Adventurer. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Je Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean, <laughs> that's correct. Jelly Bean. I'll let Jack tell you who he is, and then we'll, we'll start from there. 
Uh, well, I ran into this gentleman, actually. Uh, I ran across his YouTube channel doing uh, science projects. And lo and behold, we actually got a hold of him for some stuff for Steam Chest. And he had we had a little bit of a, his gear in our Steam Chest box for a little while. And yeah, I ran across him here only a couple days ago and decided, you know what, I'm going to reach out and, and, and talk to him. Well, and, he just uh, came and it was inappropriate, but, you know, I kind of like <laughs> Well, that's what Jack does. So. Well, I mean... <laughs> It's not fun unless it's a little inappropriate, but so, and, and kind of that's, that's where we are here now. Um, I will admit that I'm not going to be able to do you any, as good an entrance as you have already made in our pre-show here. So I'm going to let you kind of, kind of go over that one more time a little quicker if you want to, or as slow as you want to, because I think it's important that people understand kind of who you are and where you've come from. And uh, you've, you've already impressed us. And so we're already kind of sitting here just with our, and holding our jaws up. I guess, and maybe, and we usually ask a question of our guests. Um, you can, I guess, you could throw this in. However, what, how did you, how did you get into steampunk, and what is steampunk to you? That's good. Anyway. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll start with that. I, I came into steampunk because of an old comedy partner by the name of Little Beard, uh, and he and uh, one of our fellow pirates. I was a member of a pirate comedy group called the Scallywags back in the day. Uh, he and Ash had started a steampunk convention in Wichita, uh, which uh, got uh, bought out by the venue they had started it in, and the venue wow. still to this day. Um, and, and so they uh, they did a lot to introduce steampunk into the Wichita community. Uh, so Beard and I decided that we wanted to try to expand our horizons a little bit and move beyond pirate comedy, and we started looking at all our other fandoms. So uh, we did an anime show for years. We did uh, comic cons for a number of years, and we really found a lot of traction with steampunk and horror. And uh, so we we did a lot of those fandom type shows. Um, he and I split up back in 2016, 2017. Uh, he's still doing things with the Scallywags and making things go, and I'm kind of doing my my own thing here in Topeka, Kansas. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. What steampunk is to me is a good time. You know, uh, a lot of folks, a lot of folks try to put limits on it, but it is a, a fantasy uh, it is based in fantasy. And so no one has any real rules that are more applicable than others uh, to what it can be, should be, or couldn't be. Uh, you know, just if you take a look at real history, you'll find out that all sorts of things happened at the same time, like woolly mammoths and, and human beings lived at the same time. And so we, uh, we don't have a good grip on our own history, much less the uh, made up version that we enjoy. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, other so, than that, so you say you were putting on shows, steampunk shows. What is, what does that entail? What, what do you mean by steampunk show? Yeah. Uh, we, as far as steampunk science goes, uh, I try to relate everything back to uh, using chemistry to build pressure because that's the number one form of locomotion. Uh, energy provision is steam power. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you've got two ways of doing that is heating something up or making a gas expand uh, through chemical reaction. Uh, so we do a lot of taking a look at uh, how does gas expand and why. And, you know, it, it always happens when you excite the air molecules, heat them up, and they get bigger. One of my uh, favorite little demonstrations is taking uh, two balloons, different sizes. One's about a third extra large than the other one. And if I, I've attached them to uh, a couple of pieces of pipe. Then the two pieces of pipe are connected by a ball joint. So I've cut off all flow of air. And I asked the audience and, and just, you know, think about what would happen when you've got one balloon that's bigger, one balloon that's smaller. When I open up the pipe and let the air flow, what's going to happen? Hmm. So the <laughs> air would. It's going to go one way or the other. The larger balloon to the smaller one till they're both the same size. I would think. I guess it depends on the Unless there's a trick. pressure. Unless there's pressure involved within the balloon. Mm -hmm. hmm. Good question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm on with that. I think it's going to, the, the smaller balloon will the, the equate. Well, yeah. 
Okay. Um, so here's here's the thing about air pressure. And when we talk about uh, high pressure and low pressure, right? Okay. And mm -hmm. low pressure actually means that the uh, air molecules are moving faster and trying to get further away, right? And high pressure has more density on it, meaning that the outside air uh, of that pocket that we call high density is pushing in greater. So the smaller balloon actually flows into the into the bigger balloon. The oh. bigger balloon has higher, uh, it's just a little higher temperature, just barely, but it actually flows into that other, into the other balloon. Huh. So it, it messes you up, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we so, know. We learned something already. Look at that. We learned something already. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have a lot of these ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, no worries. Our, our local Fox channel. Uh, in the morning, and so I've got them all packed and ready to go to, to open up that the man They offered me a space at uh, a place called the Great Overland Station It is a uh, Train station that back that dates back to the 1910s How perfect of a backdrop for steampunk science than in a train station. That's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, great. it's just absolutely perfect and So I'm looking forward to teaching about, uh, you know, telegraphs and how they work in different forms of communication. Uh, and and you might as well know I'm going to be talking about Sir Terry Pat Pratchett and his clack system uh, when we talk about that and how you could use light instead of uh, sound and noise to communicate. Um, I, I'm going to be talking a little bit and doing the uh, Mr. Jellybean's uh, one-cent gyroscope uh, where I, I may be able to... I could pull that out if, if you really wanted to. <laughs> um, but before I take a penny and put it in a balloon, and then we make a, a gyroscope out of that and uh, study how, uh, you know, a, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Yeah. I did that with my child over the weekend, or like two weekends ago, we stuck a penny in a balloon and uh -huh. uh, threw it around. That was really cool. I never really, never yeah. really thought of that as a gyroscope, but then you mentioned it like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> a gyroscope. Um the, the neat variation on that is uh, do it again this next weekend, but take a uh, take a bolt, take a small bolt, especially one with sharp edges, and uh, put it in there instead of the penny, and tell me what you hear, because uh, uh, boy, it's a whole different sound. Huh. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a neat little demonstration. There's there's about 101 different science demonstrations that I can do with balloons. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting a number of those out. You're a mad scientist <laughs> balloon clown at this point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not bad. I, I'm actually, uh, we talked a little bit about pre-show before we even went live uh, about my health. And so I was lucky enough back in 2016 or so, and I'll, I'll post the, the link for you guys for YouTube, uh, to get a pilot episode uh, up on our PBS station and uh, right as it was happening, man, my Mac just got all these different alerts on there. I didn't notice if anyone was trying to have a conversation with us or not in the in the comments. Um, I just got in a PBS show uh, on the channel, and then I got real sick. I, I had had the diagnosis of, of congestive heart failure for about a year, uh, but then I went into the hospital right after getting that on the air, and they said, you've got two weeks to live. And man, that was the most heartbreaking thing ever. Yeah, that's not something you like to. No one wants to hear that. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And, and so uh, I, I spent quite a lot of time dealing with that, and uh, had to not work for a while. I had to cut back on my performances, and uh, just work on getting healthy. And I'm finally at a point where I can start getting back on stage again. I've still got a while to go before I'm strong enough to to do, you know, shows on a regular basis. But right. I'm, doing them uh once every two weeks up here for the summer and uh if i can make it through <laughs> that i may advertise to get it into schools so i nice. say and, and spoiler alert everybody he lasted much longer than two weeks <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was about five years ago that so was I exactly started. two weeks ago and we're waiting to see <laughs> now. Oh. yeah what you know and we we mentioned it, it was kind of neat i that was just like Right before or right during uh, going to Steamathon and uh, running into you guys. And, really? 
So yeah, it was it was just like shortly before that, uh, or shortly after that, that I had just almost killed over. And so, oh my god, yeah, wow. So for those of you who are just uh, just tuning in or didn't hear us jabbering on before, uh, being here. And his partner that he mentioned, uh, Little Beard, uh, were uh, doing a podcast many years ago. I, I don't know how many years ago that was now. So at, long. At, yeah. <laughs> at Steamathon Las Vegas, which was just a one shot convention that was absolutely amazing. And Flavio and my wife, mm -hmm. Erica, and I were all there. Um, and we watched them record it. And we said, wow. If these easy idiots could do it, I think we could do the podcast too. That, that's and yeah. they were they were talking to Frenchie and the Punk, which we also had on our podcast in the very pretty pretty early on. We had we had yeah, them at, yeah. at Steampunk November was one of the first ones we did with them there. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I love Scott and Sam. They're just fantastic, fantastic, wonderful people, and I don't get to see them nearly enough. They, actually, I don't know if we have any word if they're gonna be a Steampunk November this year or not or not, but <laughs> It's probably too early to tell. Still, they, I'm sure they're still working things out. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's where we normally see them is Steampunk November nowadays. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are, are you guys in touch with um, Marquis de Vaudeville at all? Yes. Jack is. I know Marquis de Vaudeville <laughs> fairly well. Um, yeah. We've, uh, we've actually been trying to get them in for a convention. Like if we throw a convention, they're going to be one of the guys that we want, we want there. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll have so. to we'll have, we'll have to disguise stacks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, they've probably up. forgotten. All, they've no. probably forgotten all about it. There was a little kerfuffle online with Axe and them, and it was years ago. Nobody many remembers. many years ago, many many years yeah. ago, they've probably forgotten all about it. But it, it at one point that somebody threatened to take away our Steam cred. I can tell oh. you that. I don't know if Steam Cred is a thing or not. But, I don't. I didn't know about it either until they mentioned it. So, you know, <laughs> but but we, we we make. I mean, we're, we're, since then we've been trying to. We make our own little like medallions and stuff for everything we go to. That's our Steam Cred. Okay. You know, so <laughs> I'm not wearing it now, but we. They now have papers. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it was a big kerfuffle. But it, it, it's they probably forgotten all about it by now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, yeah, but, but I keep bringing it up just for fun because I think it's hilarious. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm trying to think if I've got anyone I've got steampunk beef with. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole other section of this podcast we need to have. Who has steampunk beef? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. There, there's a lot of people that I miss doing shows with. And, and so, like, uh, Doc uh, always has a great smile on his face. Um, Mark with um, the Steampunk Stompers out of Florida. I don't know if you guys have ever met Mark or not. Mark is just absolutely amazing. I'm actually going to be using some of the music that uh, he's written as pre-show and post-show and possibly some interlude. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to help advertise them a little bit in a new market up here. Um, uh, let's see. I love Frenchie and the Punk. Yes, uh, uh, there's so many people that like I kind of miss doing shows with Dude Vader and the entire Star Wars steampunk community out there. <sighs> I mean, had, I, we I had just we had everybody from that. We community. had steampunk. We had steampunk Bubba Fett on our show recently. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Yeah, he's a good dude. Um, the steampunk Leia, I miss her. I'll tell you what. Tell you what, <laughs> haven't met her. <laughs> yeah, well, boy, well, you probably haven't seen my my Star Wars cosplay. Then, dude looks like a Leia. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. You like take your beard and like make buns out of it this way? No, uh, I actually got a a gal who had crocheted uh, some Leia a Leia wig. <laughs> you and, know what? I if you've had, I think I've seen pictures of you wearing that. Actually, yeah. What? Quite possibly, quite possibly. I'd be more than happy to share that. Oh, perfect. Uh, I, I need to make a new costume, and that one doesn't fit anymore. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe go with the uh, go the Return of the Jedi Leia and the uh, the poncho next time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I could do that. I would scare less people than than the, uh, <laughs> the kidney Leia. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that took a turn. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you one one of the coolest things with that though 
is uh, a guy who runs the Smallville Comic Con out in Hutch, Kansas, where they, they renamed the entire town to Smallville for Superman and everything else. Yes. He nice. built a full-size animatronic Jabba. Wow. wow. And, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Well, he just built a full-size uh, Batmobile that drives uh, from the animated from Batman the Animated Series. You know, that really wow. long car. Yeah. It, wow. It, it's amazing. Uh, so but, he has a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> he makes a lot of time on his hands. But yeah, he, he also works real quickly for what he does. Um, that That's insane. It, it absolutely is. But those were some of the coolest pictures is being able to get Slave Leia <laughs> with that Jabba. So. Oh, yes. We that had... Is, um, Oh, we had a convention in Dallas a while back. I think it was probably like Infinicon. No, it wasn't Infinicon. I could look it up. I got pictures. But they had the full Jabba's Palace set up with a massive carbonite Han Solo. Nice. And it was all staged where you could go up and pay like 20 bucks and get pictures in front of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually do have pictures of me standing in front of it getting all giggly about like, <laughs> neener, neener, neener. But uh, like, that, was, that was pretty fun. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I should say, you know, I'm now the executive director of an organization called the Topeka Youth Project. And our big mission uh, is to provide constructive opportunities for youth. Right. And so since 1983, we have been uh, helping Topeka's youth get and keep into their first jobs and uh, help starting them on their on their career path, you know. Um, we've helped over 6,000 kids get into their first job in about three different generations. Uh, wow. close, close to 6,000, a little over 6,000 people uh, who've gone through that program. Wow. Nice. And so what I'm using, the steampunk science shows, are a way to reach that third to fifth grade audience uh, and start talking about critical thinking as a job skill. And, and say, in order to be a good employee, you have to be able to think on your feet. You have to be able to test. You have to be able to measure uh, and teaching a lot of those core competencies or uh, science or critical thinking skills that we learn from uh, blowing things up for our education and entertainment. So. Yes, blowing things up is always entertaining and educational. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that a few times at work myself. <laughs> What's this for again? Education. <laughs> Yes, you, uh, you learn on a circuit board. If you let the magic smoke out, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got blue smoke, out. it's not a genie. That's right. <laughs> wow. Oh, so, um, so, <clears throat> what do you guys what do you guys do in your in your real world world? Who me? Yeah. <laughs> real world? world? What's the real world? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I mean I'm 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 a technician. I, I, I drive around and I take and I install and maintain anti shoplifting equipment at retail stores. So okay. that's what I do. Nice. Okay. You know. awesome. So I am a financial uh, agent. I uh, currently work for State Farm, so I do everything from you know insurance to retirement planning and life insurance, and mm -hmm. uh, keep people protected. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. I uh, I repair circuit boards, component Come on. level. You know, uh, printed circuit boards, and I shake Jack down for uh, stock tips. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the one that lets all the magic blue smoke out. Uh huh. I put it back in. Oh, I try. try. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, that's fantastic. So I, I was telling you, I used to do um, an electricity show. I can't now because I've got a pacemaker. Mm. Uh, and, yeah. and it's Wi-Fi accessible, so I have to be very careful. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one of those things. Hi, Rita. Rita sells electronic components. Yep. <laughs> yes, Rita's our one of our more our most dedicated listener. Most dedicated fan. Yes, <laughs> we, we love her. She is here every week. Every we're not even here every week, but she's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Rita, if you have any questions, I'm up for answering anything. Uh, oftentimes, I will lie to you just to see if I can make that happen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's test this theory. Yeah, uh, you got you got questions. I am a wizard in training. W I T. So I find that the majority of my wizarding is convincing other people that I am a wizard. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I, I had to grow the beard to uh, add some authenticity mm-hmm. to it. Um, I was yeah. exactly. I actually have a thing where someone was at. I had a person come up to me. He's like, "You're going gray," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm one, every gray hair I gets one step closer to being a wizard." Mm-hmm. And after that, they don't pick on my gray hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, Man, I, I've had gray hair since I was 17. Okay, so <laughs> you're a wizard. <laughs> what what is the difference between water vapor and steam? Ooh, Ooh that's. So you, you guys want to take a shot at this first? Yes. Let's see here. Well, steam obviously is comes from. Well, okay, so they both come from water, from the ground, and they get like heated up or condensated up, and then it. But steam is hot, so or can be hot. So I'm assuming it's a different size particle. Yeah, yeah uh, steam is much hotter, and yeah. uh, um, it's more uh, dynamic. It's the stuff that's going to really burn you. Uh, <laughs> where water vapor is is the stuff you could see in the air when clouds when the steam has cooled enough that it's. Fluffy and uh, yeah. Now that doesn't sound very scientific. Scientific. I'm sure Pete has a much much more uh, (laughs) accurate fluffy uh, water. I actually I I prefer yours because it's the the common man kind of understanding. You know, we we too (laughs) often. (laughs) Yes, because everyone knows Thax is a common man. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take it. uh, No, no, you're you're absolutely right. The the water vapor is what you can see because you can also see water vapor. Uh, when it gets cold out there, okay. and uh, you go outside and you see the water vapor, uh, but it's a little different process. The steam is much higher, and it's more of the gas than the uh, than the water molecules uh, falling apart. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gaseous, gaseous, just you know, like me after Taco Bell. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Taco Bell, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was going to say with, with electricity. Uh, are you guys familiar with uh, the little electricity sticks that are are made where you hold both sides of them and a noise is made? Uh, no. no, no, I'm not. So, uh, there, there's a science communicator by the name of Steve Spangler, and he was a magician oh. growing up. Okay, so you've heard of Steve Spangler? He he's I, on- I bought my nephew uh, Steve Spangler. Uh, 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 science kits for the whole year for his Christmas yeah. present. That's Absolutely. all I know of him. He sends that, me emails constantly trying to sell me more stuff. Uh, well, yeah, he, <laughs> he's a great marketer. He's a great marketer, and he's got a fantastic toy line. Um, I, I am very jealous of him. Uh, so anyway, uh, he sells this stick where you have uh, a connection on on each side. Then you have the batteries on the inside, and there's a couple of LEDs that light up, and it makes a no- an annoying sound. I sold a hundred of those in one show, in one electricity show, simply by talking about how those work, where uh, we create this circuit. Mm-hmm. Electrons are uh, excited, and if there's one thing electrons like to do, they like to move it, move it. They like to move it. <laughs> Yes. And so we, somewhere along the way, became smart enough to take those moving electrons and push them through a cycle or a circle and called it a circuit and made them do work along the way. But all the reason the electrons got started is because of the chemical reaction between a couple of metals. And, you know, I, I described this and it becomes a love story. <laughs> Instantly, these electrons, there's some chemistry, there's some repulsion at first, then there's this chase, and then along the way, these lights happen and, and beautiful things occur. Aww. Electricity is a better story, a better love story than Twilight. <laughs> well, that's not that's not hard. Um, <laughs> Twilight. Uh... <laughs> so I had the privilege of uh, selling a 100 of those to a couple off out of the science museum I worked at uh, because they use that story as a part of their wedding. So uh, So everyone got one of those. Yeah. Sounds like like you need to get some for your steam chest there. Yeah, it does. does. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) They're amazing. Well, guys, I don't want to slow us down, but I got to tell you, I'm a little parched. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I was thinking 
maybe we could uh, open a beer. Or something. Okay. Yes. This is what we, we do this on this. We do this usually a lot. We, we, we I call it my podcast within the podcast. Uh, like basically, we're just going to call it. What are you drinking now? Uh, <laughs> we, we usually have a, a beer or something. Go ahead. What are you drinking? Tax? <laughs> well, um, this week, uh, my wife went to the local uh, uh, Mexican grocery and picked up a bunch of weird things to take to Oklahoma because we had a thing to go to there. And she found this. Famosa. Famosa. Which, uh, a little rooster? It, it's got a big chicken on it. And I didn't think much <laughs> of it. It's like, okay, here's this weird Mexican lager. It's probably going to be terrible. It's actually from Guatemala. And uh, okay, not Mexico. I've already had a few of these, not today, but over the weekend. And it's really <laughs> good. It's really good. Um, so from Guatemala, nice. From Guatemala. Now, I've never been to Guatemala, but I have been to Belize a few times. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one of my favorite uh, Caribbean stops. And uh, this takes, tastes a lot like the beer they make there. I don't know why it is different than any beers I've had here. But it, it has some flavor notes that are that seem to be uh, unique to uh, the jungles of Central America, and it's it really makes good. sense, really good, and and probably not very expensive if you are uh, <laughs> south enough to have Mexican groceries in your neighborhood, or uh, Fiesta Market was where we got it, and it's, it's probably really better than drinking the water there too. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's good. It does. It definitely has a lager flavor, but there's something else about it that. Uh, Let's see if I can find some. It, it's it's very flavorful compared to like your typical American lager, which I generally consider to be bland and yeah uninteresting. <laughs> I know we've had that conversation before. <laughs> definitely, yeah, this, this, this is good. So that's what I'm drinking. Right. Awesome. So you're just, well, you're just waiting for that. Something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. I found another one. Um, I was at HEB, of course. Yeah, they sell the singles every once in a while. I found this one. I don't, I, as far as I can tell, it's just called Untitled Art. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Very, very uh, awesome. This is a trail mix stout. It has marshmallows a, in it. Well, a stout brewed with cocoa evidence? nibs. Come on, I'm reading it right now. Stout brute with cocoa nibs, coconut flakes, apricot puree, peanut butter powder, and milk sugar. Um, the Candon brewed by Untitled Art, humbly foraged brewery, a hum humble forage brewery in Wahanaki, Wisconsin, I think. Um, it's a uh, artist, and this is artist Stephen Stephanie Hammond. So I'm, I guess she's the artist of the can. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That sounds wow. like a very busy beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I, I've been I've been I've been sipping on it while we've been talking, and there, I could definitely taste the coconut flakes, but it's not a strong coconut. Like I think I had another beer re recently that had coconut in it, and it was just too much. See, I need to find that one because I, I have I have a hard time finding enough mm. coconut in anything. It's it's actually pretty it's pretty smooth. I like it. it has a nice you can smell the cocoa too, <laughs> but mm. but um, Trail it's good beer. Yeah, that's what it's called for me. <laughs> I'm gonna take that with me next time I go backpacking. I got our food. I, I got a trail mix. Yeah, it's a trail mix stout. Yep, yeah, called Untitled from Untitled Art. It's not it's not local, but it's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I'm drinking. <laughs> I have a little bit. It was my it was a Father's Day present from my mother in law, and uh, she got me uh, Texas Crown whiskey. Ooh, okay. And, uh, so I'm actually having a shot of that right now. I find it hilarious because it says it's a product of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they but, just uh, took the name Texas, I guess, and put oil put oil rigs on it, and like they'll buy it. Yeah, uh, you know, I've funny. seen worse things attributed to Texas than Canadian whiskey, uh, <laughs> hot dogs, uh, Frito pie. I don't know what these things have to do with Texas, but you go up to up the north; those things are. Texas foods. Yep, yeah, it's Texas food. It's because it has chili, I think. I think. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Well, well there's one time I was in Colorado. I think it was Colorado, and they had there's a Texas there's the the Texas um steakhouse that we have here. Sure. It, it's a chain, so they have one. They have one in Colorado, but their steaks were called like 
the El Paso ribeye, the the San Antonio this and the Dallas that, and <laughs> it was like the oh. Fort Worth that. And I was like, it's like okay. okay. There's a there's a um, restaurant up in D.C. that I ate at, and it was basically Chili's of the United States. It was the is their thing, which I'm like, first off, this is in D.C. How is this going to be any good? Um, <laughs> it, all right, so they give you you could basically buy the sampler, and they use those little. Um, a chili sampler? It's a chili sampler, literally. Okay. And, and they serve it out on these muffin tins. So it's like you can buy the six or you can buy the 28. And it's basically <laughs> just try all the different chilies they have. And I'll admit the Louisiana one is sweet. But I mean, like in the Texas one was good. It didn't come with beans unless you specifically asked for it, like real chili. And <laughs> so, I mean, it was I was very impressed with this array of different chilies from around the United States. And they actually tasted like they were supposed to. They were spicy. So they, they, they mentioned on there, I think Texas chili was like three out of four pepper hot. And I'm like, this stuff's I could, you know, inhale it through my nose and not a problem. But <laughs> right. it was properly spicy like it was supposed to be. So someone was be staying true to the art versus their consumers. And so very happy with that. And they had a lot of less spicier ones. And they were still very good. They were a lot more sweeter. It was, uh, it was different. I've never really had a sweet chili before but there's um, a chili i've heard of that uh i've never had and it sounds really bizarre uh cincinnati chili yes yes i've had that one that was one of the ones on the thingy it's freaking weird just from the description because i've never had it but it sounds like pasta sauce kinda uh, <laughs> it's 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 hormel chili on pasta Mm -hmm. is, is all it really is. It's just Hormel chili on pasta. It, it's, it's nothing to write home about. <laughs> it, it was made because someone didn't have rice and they all they could find were noodles. And they're like, screw it. This is what we're having in the chuck wagon tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Chow mein and chili. He's not wrong. I, never, I don't even see chili served on rice here. I thought no, that was I don't either. Uh, thing that my mom did. No, nah, I do it's, it. um, it's like it's know, called. Go ahead. Ch chili and cinnamon rolls. I've heard no. of that. Um, you should. But that, we don't. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't, don't do that here. Cinnamon roll, boys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Chili so that's our that's roll. our chili. Our beer talk is turning to chili talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> our podcast within the podcast within the podcast. <laughs> so chili and cornbread. Brita's got it. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good combo. Yeah, yeah that's sweet corn 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 bread. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just also on the side, you said you're from Topeka. You're in Topeka right now. Yeah, used to be. Like when I was in Topeka visiting relatives up there, they did not know what a fajita was. That, that makes sense. Is, is that true up there? Okay. Yeah, we, we've we've got about seven different Mexican restaurants, four or five different Mexican food trucks, uh, and so I think times have changed. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I was there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's some there's some good Mexican foods up here. Uh, we we actually have uh, a couple from Guatemala, uh, like you had mentioned, and they've got a, a restaurant that serves a little bit different flavor uh, of foods, and uh, you know it, it's more of that Guatemala Ecuadorian kind of style of of food of taste and spices than what you'd get in a lot of other Tex-Mex places. So yeah. Okay. okay, so the fajita has made it to Kansas. I'm good. I'm, good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, has made it to Kansas. Uh, well, we're still... That's not Mexican food, though. That's yeah. Tex. -Mex. Oh yeah, still. That's Tex Mex. I know. I know it's Tex Mex, but still, it's like we're still not sure what a chimichanga really is. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. I mean, I chimichanga is chimichanga is like you took. I, my wife's going to correct me if I'm wrong. It's on a, this it's one, a fried burrito. It's like, yeah, but what's usually in it is like um, it's a shredded beef usually mm -hmm. and a sauce. And then you wrap it in a tortilla and you deep fry it. And then it's either served that way or with a, like a cheese sauce on top. So where did that come from? I'm is assuming that, they had did, leftover did brisket. That they decided that it just needed to be wrapped in a tortilla and then deep fried. <laughs> I'm, guess, I'm guessing Georgia by way of Texas. Well, <laughs> Maybe anything could be in a chimichanga. As well, mean. like some kind of like some kind of state fair where they fry everything. You know, yeah, <laughs> a chimichanga is just a fried burrito. Apparently, you yeah. can have anything. Yeah, and then so. um, a gordita is only at, at Taco Bell. That, that's the best gordita I have found. <laughs> yeah. um, I was at Taco yeah. Bell. Mm -hmm. 
That's not true. I, I have seen gorditas uh, um, at uh, Mexican groceries. I got that like this fresh, uh, this uh, prepared food mm -hmm. sort of bar thing, and they know what that is. So there's a food truck that I had in El Paso when I was watching. Um, we were at a concert with my future <laughs> wife, who is now my wife, and she got we got these gorditas, and they were like made of like a it was a potato uh, bread. And they just slice it open. They stuff taco meat. Yeah, it's it's oh like it's a Mexican. God, I call it a Mexican hamburger. Fantastic, <laughs> and uh, like it'll it'll kill you, but it's delicious. You'll be <laughs> happy. It's a hamburger type situation, yeah. you know, basically yeah, between two great. pieces of bread. And so that's another commerce. <laughs> that's another, that's <laughs> steampunk weird. is full of good food. That's the one thing I really want. I really want yeah. more steampunk food trucks. Like they had like, trucks. well at steampunk november they keep they had that like barbecue thing there's the b52 bomber on the side of it i'm like i guess that's the closest we're gonna get they're gonna serve overpriced barbecue it's a little like, that was too sweet yeah. they were doing diesel punk then that's what they were doing yeah yeah there, it's diesel punk barbecue chicken that was exceedingly sweet like, <laughs> that happened. well I, but, I didn't talk about the drink i'm i'm consuming what it, oh yes uh, what are you drinking I, i'm well, having well, well, monoxide Ooh, oh, okay. That, Rita, Rita, Rita really likes that. Rita likes that yeah. stuff. It, it is uh, <laughs> some of the most dangerous stuff on the planet. Causes millions of dollars in property damage every year. Yep, uh, it, it'll, it'll, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. It only takes a half inch of it to drown. Uh, yep. it's, it's served in every torture chamber in elementary school ever know. <laughs> uh, and it's really bad for roofs this time of year. As yeah. it, when it falls in ice form. Uh -huh. As I've That's been dealing cool. with claims nonstop. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I, yeah. I learned that that is the true adult beverage. Yeah. Oh yes. Sure yes. yes. I read that too. <laughs> but I, I'm 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 more than happy to have you guys. You know, because of the heart situation, mm -hmm. I I get one beer a year. <laughs> all that I allow myself, uh, and so my my favorite is to go up to the Norseman, which is a Viking themed brewery uh here in topeka it's great they serve beet chips and scandinavian food uh alongside all the beers but they they produce a beer they call mother's milk mm. and it is an oat uh nitro milk stout that is flavored with cinnamon toast crunch okay i'm calling a road trip <laughs> we, road trip. Oh, wow. it, we gotta it, have cinnamon toast crunch it, norse beer sounds, i'm they, calling road trip <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they do it about once a year, and so when that time comes around, they give me a holler, and I go up there. Give us a holler. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll migrate with you. And so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm excited for that time to come up here soon. I may do two this year. I may I may get to feeling frisky, but you guys oh, are not going to be the designated drinkers or the stunt livers, if you will, uh, for for this time. Yeah, <laughs> stunt livers, I love it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't really drink a lot. I mean, I really only drink one beer every two weeks when we do the podcast. That's about as <laughs> much as I've been getting lately. But too hot um, to drink. I, think I gotta drink a lot of that with dihydramin monoxide stuff. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Hefenfeisen is good for hot ties. <laughs> <laughs> so we digressed again. Yeah, All right. So tell us, you were... Did, okay, I'm sorry. Where, where are we going to yeah, go with here? Go with here. Make, make any any question, and I okay. I will watch you. Are you say did the Jack say you're working on a show that's going to go on the air sometime or something like that? Or so I going to be did have, we did have Jelly Bean and Friends, uh, which back in the day was going on PBS. Um, then I got sick, and so now I've got to restart that process completely over. Oh no! But this time I start with uh, sponsors in hand. I work with a uh, toy company called U.S. Toy, uh, which makes exciting things such as this <laughs> brain. Yes, pull apart brain uh, that I'll be using uh, this uh, October to talk about how uh, zombie a uh, zombie virus would infest uh, and and change the mind and how it works. Nice. nice. Yeah, like, so, yeah, that's how you get kids into science right here. Right. <laughs> I, I used to use a uh, a sheep's brain, a oh. lamb's brain, because of any animal out there, they're the most uh, genetically close to a human brain to a human being's brain. Uh, sheep sheep are the closest to human human beings, even above other primates. Wow. <laughs> As we have okay. learned in this last year and a half. 
Oh, yeah. don't, don't be dare. Don't don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> But I, I feel you. <clears throat> so you actually got an actual sheep's brain, you know, the, the meat brain, uh, an actual. I've, I've done that before. You wow. Go, okay. You go to a butcher and get them pretty easily. Uh, and <laughs> okay. And mental note. <laughs> there's a dissection kit. Um, and, and you can take a look. The biggest difference is if you see the brain stem uh, coming off the, the down here where our necks are. Mm hmm Oops comes out, of course, because they're a quadruped. That makes sense, yes. And that, that's the biggest structural difference between a sheep's brain and a human's brain. Otherwise, it's just size. Uh, <laughs> so anybody out there looking for brains, um, just check the stem <laughs> to see if it's human or not. That's <laughs> absolutely right. I'm going to see that. I'm going to have that at my next like, major backdoor dealing somewhere. I'm going to like pull out there. I'm going to have to check the merchandise, how to pull it out, look at it. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, hey, wait a minute! This is not a human brain. Wait a minute! I've been had. I mean, yeah, my, my connection with US Toy does a lot of great, fun things. Like uh, part of the part of the discussion we're going to have tomorrow uh, are you know I've got these different colored candles, huh. and mm -hmm. I make some uh, fireballs happen with them with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to talk about the the colors. Of fireworks with that and where they come from. That makes sense. The different kinds of chemicals they may put in them. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. this the, the light bar? Here's the, here's the light bar where you, you know you've got the the contacts on each side, and this one needs a new battery, but but it's working. <laughs> I, I've had up to 67, 67 kindergartners attached to these things, and it's still works. <laughs> nice. So you can just make, you just see how big of a circuit we can make. Oh, that's wow. great! I love that. Then, uh, of course, I've, I've got uh, all sorts of stuff dealing with water. These these are those little microbes that Needs. are, yeah, uh, they're a sodium polyacrylate, uh, which is actually the same stuff that they use in baby diapers and astronaut suit to soak up pee. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the same thing that these things are made out of, as well as the little white things inside the soil uh, where you go. Yeah, okay. that's all sodium polyacrylate and the grow your own boyfriend yep. is same material same material it expands up to 100 times its size <sighs> so working with a toy store is amazing and, and i just have a whole lot of fun uh working with us toy out of kansas city and the things they do we'll also be uh doing some dancing raisins uh, i don't know if you guys have seen that or, or not um dancing I mean, raisins right? So it, it's a classic science demonstration where you take a, a real tall glass of a bubbly liquid like a ginger ale or tonic water or 7-Up or Sprite, something that you can see easily through, and you take some uh, raisins, and the drier the better, and you just toss them in there. And because of the shape of the raisin and the chemical reaction between the raisin and the soda, the carbon dioxide bubbles get trapped underneath them and lift the raisins up so they're dancing. <laughs> okay. It's the awesome. same, same chemical process called nucleation at a much smaller level that causes the Mentos and Diet Coke reaction. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a controlled so reaction like, in this case. Yeah, it's Mentos and, and Diet Coke in those. I see why you stick with the raisins, though. Yeah. 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 Clean up after <laughs> Mentos. Liquid nitrogen is, is one of the things Rita is mentioning. I love performing oh, with yeah. liquid nitrogen. Uh, liquid nitrogen stays at negative 322 degrees, so it's colder than the moon. Uh, it will it will burn you chemically, so you have mm -hmm. to make sure that you're uh, wearing a couple different layers. Uh, I have walked away from shows where I've launched Pringles cans up into the air uh, using... Uh, using liquid nitrogen and ended up with liquid nitrogen on the jeans and ended up with a welt where it, it had Ouch. burned me. Um, and, and so you have to be very careful, but my favorite, my absolute favorite demonstration to do with liquid nitrogen is you take a puff Cheeto, not, <laughs> not, not the craggly ones, but the puffed ones She's right. and you dip it in the liquid nitrogen. Now, those Cheetos have a very high uh, heat coefficient, right? It takes a lot of temperature change to change them. And so you're not going to change them. Uh, but it traps some of the nitrogen 
inside of the Cheeto itself, and you don't get much colder, then you can put it in your mouth and send out nitrogen steam. Wow. So, <laughs> that makes me uh, super nervous. Yeah, that, it's, it's the best way to play dragon. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, That's like, well, yeah, so instead of fire breathing, you're, you're cold breathing. That's Ice pretty breathing. cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and, and I'll do that. And I'll make, I'll make uh, some gourmet liquid nitrogen ice cream. Uh, I, I've done the whole apple on a tea ball, hit it against a wall, and it shatters. Uh, and then uh, the next coolest thing is you take really hot water and some dish soap and throw the liquid nitrogen in there and it expands out of the mop bucket into this huge fountain of bubbles everywhere <laughs> and it is the best way to clean a stage after a wild show like that <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, i've got it i've got to get about seven eight hundred dollars together to get uh, one of the uh, devices that you need to carry liquid nitrogen. And, and to once, once you've got that, it's fairly easy to talk to air gas about getting uh, mm -hmm. nitrogen. And it's it's actually surprisingly very cheap. So, yes, it is. Huh. Uh, I was very surprised when I was working in the oil field how much we use liquid nitrogen for, mm -hmm. a, lot of, for a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. And like, even like cleaning pipes and whatnot it's been used you, you, oh, yeah. every now and then you see like the side of the street they'll have this like liquid nitrogen canister and they've plugged it into the sewer or something i guess they're like blowing stuff out but yeah like oh, yeah. the first thing i'm thinking of is like man that's like there's no one around i could just i think i could just load that into my truck yeah. <laughs> well and and the thing is is like every canister uh doesn't screw down right mm -hmm. the, the expansion of li of liquid nitrogen to gaseous nitrogen is so incredibly extreme. Like I want to say, just getting up to room temperature, it expands two to three hundred times its size, uh, and uh, and and so that's why they're blowing out everything out of those tubes. Is they're getting just the right amount of pressure, and it pushes everything out of the way. Um, so it, it, it's a very good way, just because of that expansion. But also, um, what it, it's used for in a lot of mechanical uh, spaces is to take a piece of metal fit into another piece of metal. And so when they both warm back up to normal temperature, they can't they, be connected. It's a process called cold welding. And, hmm, I've uh, heard of that. Yeah. And, and so you can do all sorts. There's a demonstration that takes a hoop and a ball and the ball is too big to go through the hoop. Mm -hmm. You dip it in, in nitrogen and it contracts so much that you can put it through the hoop give it time to warm up and you can't pull it back out. I think my, my 12th grade science teacher did that. Yeah. <laughs> or was yeah. it my 11th grade? It was his science teacher in high school did that. I think one time Absolutely. we did it with cups, like glass cups, with like hot water and cold water and you couldn't get them apart. But if you like, mm -hmm. throw, like made the small, like one on top colder and the one on the bottom, you know, expanded and you could get them apart. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it'd been a lot more fun with, you know, Freaking night liquid nitrogen. Right. <laughs> I used to watch Nova and they'd like dip like roses and um, like uh, uh, not, not tennis balls, uh, racket balls into the stuff and then like throw them at walls and you just watch them shatter. Like, mm -hmm. So much fun. You mentioned ice cream. Isn't yeah. that, is that how they make dipping dots? It is exactly how they make dipping dots. Okay. Ice cream right. of the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's how they keep it in such how they keep it where it doesn't uh, fall apart so easily and they keep all the pieces separate is that it's at such extreme cold that they don't melt at all. Right. Okay. And then, uh, well, and the ice cream itself helps keep cold, which is why it melts so instantly when it hits your tongue as well. And so, but Dippin' Dots is, is a good treat. Um, you know, there's another science demonstration uh, where you take uh alginate and potassium chlorate, I want to say, and you can make traditional gummy bears with the juice inside. Hmm. Yeah. Whoa. And then, then there's a way that you can take that into uh, another potassium and just throw, throw that sucrose right in there, and it lights up and, and sends out uh, just pure potassium. Uh, and it's it's a bright white light that's cool to watch. But huh. you, you can go blind. So 
<clears throat> Nuclear gummy, wear, gummy bears. <laughs> so, many things, so many ways that you can talk about expansion. Uh, and, and, you know, it fits perfectly within steampunk world yep. uh, to, to do all these different types of experiments. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So wow. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to do three different shows this summer. Okay. Uh, the first one we're going to start off with is I'm calling Under Pressure. Uh, and it, we're going to be talking about, you know, how there's 15 pounds of pressure on every square inch of us. We, we literally live under an ocean of air. Uh, you know, and air is made up of stuff. And that stuff just happens to be like 78% uh, nitrogen, 18% oxygen. 2% uh, carbon dioxide and minuscule amounts of argon and other, other things in the air. Uh, and, and so all these things have mass and they're always pushing down on us. Uh, and so the job of steampunkers is how to figure out how to push back and make things work for us and make chemistry uh, and the expansion of air uh, work for us, uh, so on and so forth. So that's under pressure. Uh, the next show that we're going to do uh, is Secrets of Flight, where we're going to be talking a lot about the Bernoulli principle and uh, do a lot of the uh, just talking about how air balloons work, uh, talking about the Lumiere brothers and their their first experiment with a hot air balloon. Are you guys familiar with that? Uh-uh. Oh, I can't. Experiments, no. In yeah. 1905, the Lumiere brothers send up in a hot air balloon a uh, flightless chicken a goat and a duck, I want to say, <laughs> uh, just just to see if it would work. And uh, so they sent them halfway across France. And so <laughs> using hot air balloons as a way of travel. Um, this this is before they started working with, with film I, and everything. So. I can just I could for some, for some reason I just I just imagine some some poor family on the other side of France praying yeah. like we're you know we need food. We, we're starving, and all of a sudden, this big balloon comes out of this comes out of the ground and lands with a chicken. Our prayers have been answered. Exactly. So could be. It's, it's not like they've seen anything like that before, you know. So right. it'd be, that'd be like a miracle for them, right? Absolutely. So we're we're, we're going to do under pressure, through the flight, and then um, I I don't know if our conversation about uh, the wizard, the my mentor, uh, got on or not. Um, I'm not sure now. No. Okay, so uh, I I was a social worker and a pirate with the Renaissance Festival um, for a number of years. Got burnt out, went to summer camp, uh, learned I really liked doing science demonstrations, came back, got a job doing that at the Children's Museum. Uh, this guy had helped uh, Wichita get their thing done, but he uh, he was one of the he was from Wichita, wrote for Mister Wizard back on Nickelodeon days. Then he wrote a little show at Discovery called uh, Mythbusters. He actually was also the guy that the writers of, of MacGyver would call and say, how would MacGyver do that? <laughs> and so okay. uh, I, I'm privileged to say I work for MacGyver. Nice. Uh, and uh, the, the mind behind MacGyver and everything else. So, you know, this, this guy's just absolutely amazing. He's become like a father figure mentor and everything else. Uh, but there, there have been four wizards out of the Royal Institution uh, in London, uh, the the first was oh my gosh uh, Faraday. Uh, two hundred years two hundred years ago, Faraday was the first wizard. He got that title after he put forth a science demonstration show, first of its kind, talking about the nature of a flame. Uh, he, he called it the children's science lecture. Uh, and so Christmas Day, he did the science lecture for children of London talking about why the flame of a, of a candle is orange and, and how we know it's a certain gas that's burning that causes that temperature of flame. Um, then it was passed to an American uh, by the name of Hubert Allier out of Princeton. He was Albert Einstein's next door neighbor. Uh, he taught <laughs> chemistry out of Princeton. And he was the inspiration for Walt Disney to create a movie called The Absent-Minded Professor. Uh, huh, okay. So Hubert Allier uh, built a lot of his career around the time of the atom bomb uh, and went around and described what nuclear power was, why the atom bomb was so much stronger than any other weapon humanity had seen before, and just did these demonstrations on ABC back in the day. Um, 
one of his chemistry students was a, a guy by the name of Don Herbert uh, that we know as Mr. Wizard. And uh, Mr. Wizard had the, the science show sponsored by Kellogg on ABC back in the day, uh, in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and then in the 80s, 90s, started up Mr. Wizard's uh, Watch Mr. Wizard. Um, no, Mr. Wizard's World. The first show was Watch Mr. Wizard. Then it was Mr. Wizard's World on, on Nickelodeon. And then Jake in 20, 2008 was named Wizard 4 uh, right at the time of Don's death. Um, so Jake has been Wizard 4. He's got this staff with uh, amazing little trinkets from all the other wizards that's passed down from wizard to wizard. And, and because of who I am and my connections, my official title is Wizard in Training. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, one of those things. I'm, I'm one of several people that he, he works with. Uh, a lot of my peers also have like their own science show. There's a guy out of, uh, there, there's a couple of gals out of Texas. Uh, there is a guy who had, who was on the science channel uh, by the name of Kevin. Uh, I, I want to try and say, uh, but he had a couple of different shows, so on and so forth. And so that's where I'm going to be pushing I, I, next is uh, I really want to get on TV, get strong enough to get back on TV and get my show. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. So, I hope yeah. it happens. Is that, I, yeah. Inspiration yeah. to us all here. Maybe maybe we ought to introduce you to our friend Daniel, who does mm -hmm. science shows locally here. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he might be able to contribute something, or maybe you can help him out. I don't know what, how. I don't know. What, what city are you guys in? I'm sorry? What city are you guys in? Oh, we're in Austin, Texas. You're in Austin. Oh, I love Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I, I had a wicked wild time at South by Southwest. Uh, <laughs> Who <but> hasn't? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I shouldn't talk about because I was with the producers and Roadrunner Records, and uh, I, I heard a lot of great backstage gossip about Nickelback. Uh, oh. So that, was, that was an amazing time. Uh, so went went there, and then we ended up. I, I worked for a rock and roll television show for a while called Heavy Pork out of Wichita. And we would travel around going to different shows. Like we played mini golf with Incubus, uh, sat on Willie's bus and did things. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> things. <laughs> and, and, you know, there was a bunch of other, other things that had gone on. But we went down and we were taping uh, this new sport called Rage Ball uh, at spring break of um, uh, what is that? What's that popular spring break place down there? Uh, the uh, Port Aransas or uh, Mustang, Padre? Mustang Island? Padre, no. Padre Island. Padre. Padre Island, yeah. Padre, Padre Island. I'm, I'm shooting this rage ball. Uh, I'm, I'm using a Canon XL1. This is probably about 2005, 2006. I almost get arrested because they're convinced, the police are convinced I'm girls gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no, this is, is for science. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, yeah, that's it's, hilarious. It's, it's, it's entertainment, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, did, did you? You didn't have a big bus with a bunch of half-naked women painted no, on the side of I it. Mean, not, not that trip. I mean, that's not, usually, okay. That's usually how we'd roll, but uh, no. <laughs> you know, for science. Yeah. Yes. Of course. I want to see science. You yeah, um, yeah. It, it it was a good time. It was it was way back when. It was a whole different life. Yeah, I understand. Good I'm time. gonna look up Rage Ball. I've never heard of that. Rage oh man, it, it's a it's a combination of dodgeball and Quidditch. And so it's <laughs> I a, just. I just I just sent you a, a PM with um, our our friend's website. You do with okay. it what you will. Okay, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Rage ball. Rage ball. Okay. Yeah, I don't know wow. if anything out there anymore. Is there anything popping up? Uh, I'm getting a bunch of pictures of something that looks halfway between a medicine ball and a you know hundred year old football, like mm -hmm. hand stitched together. Um, <laughs> That's about right. So, Out of so it's yeah. obviously something. The game is <laughs> a lot like um, if you find a video, you might find something from Heavy Pork. Um, 
and uh, there's some of the promos that we did for it. Gameplay was like dodgeball. You threw it. If, if you caught it, you stayed in. If uh, it hit you and you didn't catch it, you were out. You could bring teammates back by throwing it against the back wall and, and into a hoop. Uh, nice. So that's where the Quidditch part comes in. Is oh. You can actually bring, bring your teammates back. Okay, okay. And, and so uh, the rounds could last almost indefinitely, depending on how good of a shot your team is. So, Yeah. Cool. That sounds that sounds fun. The closest I've ever come is I once participated in. Um, have you ever seen that with the movie with Rutger Howard called Blood of Heroes? Oh, I know where you're going with that. And and they they played they played a game called um what was it called um facts help me out here um um they 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 play they play it at Sherwood now too yeah <laughs> um so uh, they they played in Europe um it's called uh, Jugga. <laughs> Jugger, jugging, jugging, or jugging, or, yeah. in, or in the U.S. it's jugging. But yeah, basically, uh, yeah, basically, you have like a different people with different types of weapons, like swords mm -hmm. or a, a whip or whatever. And yeah, we we had a we 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 were in a society that that, that had a version of that, and yeah, we played that. It was pretty rough at one point yeah. or another. Um, I I was the goalie. I had two flails. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> a very uh, high impact football kind of game yeah <laughs> sounds like it wow it was it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty it, it got pretty brutal even though even though they were padded weapons it still got pretty brutal <laughs> <laughs> uh but oh, we are well we are over an hour now yeah um uh -oh. we should probably be wrapping this up um <laughs> So, I think yeah. last time last time we had a guest, we went like two hours and I got some complaints that it was too long. It's like, well, I'm sorry, we had a guest. <laughs> you know, it's like, but I mean, apparently people could barely hold their attention over an hour, which I understand. That's from that's a, that's the from listening to so many podcasts, that is the general consensus is about an hour is good. <laughs> you know, any more than that is too much. Yeah. Um, so let's wrap things up. So if, if anybody wants to uh, see your stuff or contact you, or if, if you want to be contacted, oh, sure. uh, tell us, tell uh, us how you, tell us, tell well, us where they can find you. There's a couple of different ways. Uh, you can find me at jelly bean uh, here on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me through us toy costume and magic shop. Uh, you can find me through uh, Topeka youth project. Uh, those are a lot of the ways that I can be reached, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll be putting up some media as soon as I've got it done, so probably after tomorrow. Uh, I did find your YouTube channel that yeah. doesn't look like it's been updated in some years, but you're there, and there's yeah. quite a bit to, to watch. Yeah, there, there, there should be some some good things on there. I don't know if I still have the uh, science selfies on there or not, uh, but that was that was the stuff that really got me into the uh, Jelly Bean and Friends PBS show. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. Very cool. <laughs> so I, I want to once thank you for coming on. Um, yes. Thank you for for kind of being our my inspiration to start this podcast because <laughs> we we saw, we saw you in Vegas. I didn't. I, I mean, before he mentioned it, I didn't even realize it. But yeah, now that now he mentioned it, yes, we did see you in Vegas. We were in the audience while you were talking to Frenchy and the Punk. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? That's 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 very humbling. Thank you. <laughs> I, need that. I need that today. That's, that's a neat little boost, and so I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's so it's just such a small world that you know. He, it, what, here you are, you know. It's like yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, I mean. I don't know if we're, you know, you're welcome on, if you have anything you need to push in the future, you're welcome to t come in and talk to us. Um, I mean, sure. may may maybe we can see you. Maybe, maybe you'll come to Steampunk November. I, I, would, <laughs> I, I would love to have, have the people contact me. We'll find a way to make it happen. So, <laughs> Jack, get on that. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you go because we're going to we're just going to do our own plugs after this. Unless you want to listen to our plugs. I, I can listen to your plugs. <laughs> sure. OK, thanks. Thank, OK, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, once again, you can find us at Tex at um, Texas Steampunk Connection on Facebook. We now have a Patreon. Jack, tell them about the Patreon. He, you're, on, you're, you're, Jack, Jack, you're muted. You're muted, Jack. <laughs> Jack, hello, <laughs> hello, Jack. <laughs> Jack's broken. This on? Okay, it's on now. Uh, we are. Uh, it is TX Steampunk Connection on Patreon. You can hit us up, buy us a beer. Uh, we'll be having more steps as we as soon as we figure out how we want to do that. Moving yes, forward at, with that. Um, at, I added something for the three dollar for the three dollar 
the only tier that we have open right now. Basically, I have there is a list of over a hundred steampunk and steampunk related comic book titles, <laughs> all of which I own and read. <laughs> uh, I've also um, so, contributed a link to a uh, steam uh, steampunk event calendar, which we'll probably talk about the events as they come up. Mm -hmm. But we're continuing to update those uh, as I find new events. So right. uh, yes, I will be updating. Sorry, in the Sorry. know, the calendar is on the uh, Patreon page, and uh, absolutely need to thank Rita yes. and uh, Kitty. Kitty for being our two <coughs> patrons. We, ha we have a third. We have a third. What? <laughs> yes, we have a third. You didn't. You didn't get the notice. You didn't, you didn't get the notice. You're not checking um, the emails. No, well, I, I can't get in. Yeah, I, I just set the thing up. I, I, I've got a quick question on on steampunk comics. Uh -huh. do, you have, do you have Children of Proteus listed on there? Children of Proteus, I have not heard of that one. Take you mentioned look. it earlier, and I I looked them up. Take a look; they've got five issues. Uh, they were in Wichita, Kansas. Now they're in Germany because he's on deployment, and and Kate moved out with him. But check oh. out Children of of Proteus. They are an aquatic based steampunk comic. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I just looked it up. It is on my list. I yeah. Yeah, basically as I was going to say it's like yeah, I'll be updating them as I find new ones and I will I know there are a lot of comics out there that I do not have and have not read. I will be making a separate list for that. <laughs> so you can so other people can you know, you can all look for those as well as me. I can look for them as well. <laughs> and so basically if so if you know if a if you have access to the list and there is something on the list that you that I do not have let me know so that maybe I can look it up and read it myself and enjoy. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I will also be contributing to the Patreon. I will have a short mini video I'll be sticking up and the only Patreon viewers will be able to view it. So yay for that fun. Awesome. And uh, I'm also going to plug Steam Chest, world's of only and best steampunk subscription service. Hit us up at you know chestofsteam.com. So yes, once again, any questions, comments, Find us on Facebook. That's the best place to find us yeah, at Texas Steampunk Connection. Um, complaints. <laughs> go to go to find us on Twitter. I have a Twitter account. I don't know how to use it, but find it there. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so once again, thank you very much. And until next time, mind, mind your gauges. gauges. <laughs> and I'm hitting the exit button.